Hello and welcome back. Today we will be continuing our Victoria 3 tutorial series and we are going to be talking about the trade union interest group and how to make them powerful in particular. Uh, this will involve us unpacking quite a bit of things. Uh, we're going to first talk about why we want them powerful, then we're going to talk about uh, technologies that make them more powerful, uh, clout both from voting and from wealth, uh, pops and different jobs, and wages, and also bolstering and suppressing all as a part of a strategy for empowering the trade unionists, um, there's a lot of uh, interlaced parts or a lot of things that interact with each other and so we'll be unpacking that and how to think about making them powerful and to try and get them more powerful earlier in the game and so let's jump in. So the first reason to try and get the trade unionists powerful is their bonuses are particularly good. I think they're the best in the game. Um, you will get a 10% bonus to manufacturing industry throughput when you have plus five happiness on your trade unionists. And if they are powerful, that is to say, if they are above 20% clout or stay above 18% once you already get them above, this bonus will be doubled, which is why we have 20% manufacturing industry throughput. So with the 20% manufacturing industry throughput, this will boost our buildings. Now, you will likely already have manufacturing industries throughput uh, from economies of scale and various other factors you can get. And so even if you already have 50% from economies of scale, this 20% will still represent, you know, roughly speaking, a 12% uh, 12 to 13% increase in the amount of goods you are producing basically for free. This is a huge juice to have on the amount of goods you are uh, building and just incredibly uh, increases your output. Notably, this is on manufacturing um, not on resource industries or on agriculture. And then second up, if you get a plus 10 bonus, you get extra workforce ratio. Now this is an equilibrium that you will trend towards, but what it does is it increases the percentage of your population that are working rather than being dependents. And this is really powerful. It gives you access to more workers, um, which is quite, quite strong. And uh, this will also be, this is one of the best bonuses in the game, but you will not feel it immediately because what it does is it changes the equilibrium um, towards which you trend. Uh, you know, it starts off with rather, roughly 25% uh, employment versus 75%, and this pushes you in the direction in terms of the new equilibrium. You will trend towards it. Uh, notably, another good spot to get this effect is from women's suffrage, um, as well as propertied women, women in the workplace, these types of ones. And the second reason why you are trying to get the trade unions powerful is they support a lot of particularly good laws. Um, they will support compulsory primary school and graduated taxation. These are kind of the bigger ones, but they will also support regulatory bodies slash workers protections if you're feeling frisky with the minimum wage, and they will also support old age pension. And so the combination of all this is generally why you want to make them powerful. It can be quite hard to get on to graduated taxation without them being powerful. And so getting them to that point will be a big part of, uh, you know, it will, because their bonuses are the best, uh, and on top of, you know, trying to push through the last bit of laws you want, um, to try and be as strong as possible, this is generally why you want to make the trade unionists powerful. So before we can talk about clout, we actually need to talk about a hidden modifier that applies to the trade unionists. It's not visible anywhere in game, but it is visible in the wiki. Uh, there are two technologies before you research either one of them, you will suffer a 50% malice for each one uh, towards a pop attraction to the trade unionists. And in particular, if you have both, this will be a 75%, that's 0.5 times 0.5 um, malice towards a pop attraction. And those two texts are egalitarianism and also labor movement. You'll You'll notice if you zoom in and you hover any of these, none of these will say anything about the political power of the trade unionists, but these modifiers do apply and you can find this if you take a look at the wiki here. Let's jump in for just a moment to take a look. Final weight multiplied by 0.5 if not egalitarianism and 0.5 if not labor movement. So if you are trying to rush getting them powerful, you are going to kind of want to make a move for these texts in addition to doing all the other things that we are about to discuss. So clout is determined proportionally to political strength, which is to say that your clout of all of your interest groups combined will add up to 100, and it is divided proportional to each one of these interest groups relative to how much political strength they have. If we hover over the trade unionists, and then we hover over the clout, and we go to political strength, we will receive a little tooltip which describes how it is determined, and it is a combination of both wealth and of voting. Um, you, it, you also 
you'll get a juice in particular of the political strength of all of the pops in your capital and a malice towards all the political strength of pops in unincorporated states, which is overall not the biggest effect uh, to be concerned about, but it is one that is notable. Now, the pops you get for the amount you get from voting will be dependent on two things. One, who got the sh biggest share of votes in the previous election, and two, the type of voting you have. And while it's not... Uh, it's not necessarily the most abundantly clear. If we jump into the browser and take a look at the wiki, uh, we will be able to unpack this a little bit, which is as you go down uh, the as you go down the tree, uh, you will start to taking away more and more clout from voting uh, from pops that are uh, going to be more oriented towards aristocracy and ownership. So that's capitalists and landowners are going to get a larger and larger share of the power and less power will be determined from votes as you start off as landed voting and the opposite will be true as you trend towards universal suffrage which will trend or tend to kind of empower the rural folk and the trade unionists more and so passing laws in the direction of universal suffrage will allow you to have a system that is going to be closer towards um empowering the trade unionists in particular um but there's another thing to uh, note here a very important thing which is this little note here which is politically inactive pops regardless of whether they are legally eligible to uh eligible politically in inactive pops do not vote these pops are not part of any interest group and tend to have low literacy and or standard of living for example peasants working in subsistence farms are almost always politically inactive and this will also inform kind of the way things go if you have for example pass the universal suffrage but everyone is poor then the people who are still rich will tend to have a really large percentage of their clout because most of the clout is still being determined by wealth because a lot of people aren't voting whereas if you have a really high sol kind Country, the opposite will be true where even if you are on something like landed voting um something to this effect or in particular wealth voting is a better one to think about even if you are on this then you will still have really powerful trade unionists and rural folk uh, because they have so much money to be politically active and so this is important to remember and keep in mind so in order to kind of unpack why it's significant uh, determining clout in terms of both wealth as well as votes uh, for the trade unions specifically we need to take a look at what types of pops are supporting them and we can see here that it is is laborers in terms of nominally now this tooltip is giving us the nominal amount not who's contributing to the clout that is the number of laborers the number of machinists the number of engineers very often it is actually in reverse in terms of which ones are contributing the most to clout where engineers will contribute the most to clout and then machinists and then laborers and so this is important to kind of understand why the more progressive voting laws that allow more people to vote are going to be positive for the uh the positive for the trade unions in particular because a lot of their alliance share of their people are making very very little and so when you make it so those people making very very little can vote that is you don't you're on you aren't on wealth voting census suffrage landed voting these types of laws this will help them to come on up in particular like if we take a look at the industrialists and we look at the cloud we will see that numerically they're primarily supported by engineers and then by capitalists and Engin engineers and capitalists both make a ton of money which is going to allow them to be more politically active early on so let's take a quick look at uh just take a look at our population now we have a really high sol here in india we have an sol of 20 and if we go to take a look at the charts uh and we take a look at the laborers or actually let's look at the detailed list we will see that a lot of laborers are politically inactive but they're still slightly politically active they will tend to support the trade unions if we come in here though we can see that a lot of them will still be politically inactive which means they won't be voting and they're not contributing to clout if we were let's say uh you know a much lower or even just a little bit lower 17 as our average sol as this lower strata sol tends to drop you will become less and less politically active so let's look take a look in the wiki at two things here um to try and unpack a little bit some of this uh and we will get there right now so the pop attraction for um, the trade unions in particular, we will see the trade unions are over here, and we will take a look at which pops they are attracted. Uh, in particular, you have plus 50 base weight. Uh, and so 
every pop is going to get uh, attracted plus 50 with a uh, sort of asterisk. It has to not be employed in agriculture, ranching, or plantations, and the country must be centralized. So the resource industries are a go, but agriculture, ranching, and plantations, all of those pops that are laborers in particular will be attracted to rural folk instead. Um, now, if we scroll down, we will see we have two weightings specially towards the trade unions, and that is plus 50 on machinists, who does not have any other weight, and also plus 100, uh, or sorry, plus 50 on the laborers, and then plus 100 on the machinists, who do not have any other weight. Um, in particular, engineers often really support the trade unionists, and you might say, well, there's no weighting here, but if you take a look, there's 50 for free, and the machinists, while, or sorry, the engineers, while they do have a weight uh, towards the industrialists, um, it's only plus 50, and it's just the plus 50 off of here. Now, they will also have some weighting towards the intelligentsia, based on literacy rate, right? Um, but it is not uh, anywhere near as much weight as, say, an academic. So an academic will also tend to trend to some degree to be trade unionist. Um, they'll have roughly uh, an attraction to the intelligentsia of depending on your literacy maybe 225 and then 50 to the trade unions and so the primarily the primary jobs you really care about are going to be the laborers the machinists and the engineers even though there's not a direct weight towards them um, you can affect a lot of things through events and these sorts of things now moving on to the second point we want to make about these professions is going to be their wage multiplier Every single pop gets paid an amount that is proportional um, to each other, and this is uh, a result of the lab uh, their wage multiplier. So, for example, if the if the capitalist is going to get paid six, if they have a wage multiplier of six. That that means every place that employs in that same building is going to have to pay the laborer one. If the capitalist gets paid twelve, all the laborers have to get paid two. If we take a look at the interest groups, or sorry, not the interest groups, the job types we care about, which are laborers, machinists, and engineers, we will see the laborers have a wage multiplier of one. So as long as the wages are low, they are not going to be politically active because they're not making much. The machinists have a wage multiplier of 1.5. It's going to be a similar story, but a little bit, um, it's going to be a little bit more politically active. The threshold at which the machinists start becoming politically active is going to be a lot sooner than the laborers. And finally, uh, it is also going to be on the engineers. Uh, they are going to have a wage multiplier of three, which is double the machinists. The engineers will almost always be politically active um, as soon as you start to get them. And so, okay, let's jump back into the game and talk about this and unpack this a little bit. Okay, to highlight some of these ideas, we have here Tooling Workshop. Now, currently we have it on the worst PMs where we have uh, shopkeepers and laborers. If we take a look at the wage, we will see that shopkeepers have a wage multiplier of two. They are getting paid exactly double the laborers. If we swap up to wrought iron tools, uh, we will have a different employment type of thing where we will now have capitalists who are getting paid six times what the laborers are getting paid and machinists which are getting paid um, what is it one and a half times what the laborers are getting paid and so this is kind of thing one in terms of how money is distributed in the balance of things but we also have ownership and so ownership all of the money that the building makes in excess of its costs is going to be its positive weekly balance and this is going to get paid to the owners of the building which in this case is going to be capitalists and so this is how capitalists extract an enormous amount of wealth um, the cheaper your labor is overall the more and a higher percentage of wealth will be going to the owners of the building which is going to make it so less wealth is going to be going to the trade unionist oriented pops generally speaking because they have a wage multiplier of 1 and 1.5x and they never own buildings unless you're on council republic and so this is kind of important to unpack and the cost of as labor is cheaper this balance will get even and even bigger in proportion to you know the amount that's getting paid out just to flat wages which is going to affect the overall wealth of the way things are going because every building uh the profitability of the building is going to be its uh the sell price of all of its good minus its inputs which in this case includes wages but also wood and steel uh, iron and but while it is including wages the cheaper wages are the bigger this is and so often it is uh 
an indicator of going to be what you want to think about is the less unemployment you have, the more powerful the trade unions are going to be because labor will get more competitive. It will drive up the price of wages. This will kill the weekly balance um, to some extent. And this killing of the weekly balance, while it does eat into things like your investment pool transfer, um, if you are on proportional taxation or uh, a later taxation, you will still benefit a lot just from the increased wages and the increased output of goods. And this will be good, and it'll also be particularly good for empowering the trade unionists. And also, if we take a look here, just taking a look at what types of pops are going to be employed here, we see that we are employing, you know, 1.6k uh, capitalists and then 8k machinists. As we get to later PMs, we will tend to employ uh, almost all of the later PMs, the later production PMs, take away the amount of laborers, and in exchange you will get higher tier pops, notably machinists and engineers. And remember, machinists and engineers have a higher wage multiplier, so this too effectively dilutes the amount of money pops are getting or the capitalists are getting paid because before on wrought iron tools if we take a look the capitalists are going to be having this 6x multiplier um, and then we have the machinists and the engineer uh, the laborers as we move to the next one it is now going to be even more uh, machinists and we're adding engineers which uh, kind of Proportionally, it takes more away from the capitalists in addition to making the building less profitable on the point of wages, but the, the PMs are more efficient. So the increased efficiency in the PMs more than makes up for it. We get an increased weekly balance, um, even though we have more in wages. Now these wages have to update. Uh, Pop's got to get employed in the other ones. If you see, it's all in the laborers and uh, engineers. The overall wages are going to be higher of this building though. And so um, this is kind of important for uh, unpacking it uh, in terms of just thinking about the buildings because what you want to do is you actually want to slowly pull SOL up. As SOL gets higher, um, it's going to make the weekly balance smaller. It's going to make the wages larger. And this increases the proportion of wealth that is going to be in the hands of the machinists and the engineers. Now coming back to this population tab here, we will see that we have laborers that are politically inactive the engineers will almost always be politically active and they will tend to uh, lean equally both capitalist and uh, industrialist but you can also through events tend to increase the attraction overall to the trade unionists but the machinists in particular will almost always be trade unionist and you notice a lot of them are politically inactive right when you get to roughly uh, let's say 12 SOL maybe a little bit higher than 12, 12 to 14-ish, this is when your machinists that are doing a little bit better will start to become politically active. When you get to an SOL of maybe around 18-ish, um, you notice this is kind of proportional because the, the machinist is getting paid... Um, uh, what is it, 50% more, it's roughly 18, somewhere in that ballpark, then you will see laborers start to get politically active, but a lot of them will still not be politically active. And so one thing you can do to increase the trade union's power is work towards increasing your SOL, which is going to be good, um, but it is not going to be good super early. Generally, you kind of want to get onto, you know, uh, proportional taxation before it starts to feel a lot better, because if you're on per capita taxation, um, you're going to be getting a larger share of your money from uh, investment pool transfer. You want to get a lot of pops. You want to keep the price of labor down um, so that you can get more money for building. Once you get on proportional taxation, it becomes less important. And once you get on a graduated taxation, it becomes even less important. But there's a catch-22 here where you generally can't get graduated taxation unless you already have the trade unionists um, to some degree powerful. Okay. I think it's worth taking a little bit of a closer look at each of these tax methods in order to kind of illustrate why it is that you start caring a little bit less about uh, investment pool transfer and it starts becoming less of a big deal. And that is because as you move down towards graduated taxation, you will have increasing levels of taxation on the capitalists, which will in turn help you to try and empower the trade unions in particular. We notice land-based taxation. Um, this is going to be land tax. This is going to tax the capitalists quite a bit and it's going to be an income tax, but relative 
relatively speaking, there's not much tax uh, in its entirety, and so you do not develop a lot of money from tax. So when you're on land-based taxation, a huge amount of percentage of the money you're getting is going to be from the investment pool transfer, and so you want profits to be really high. And then when you come to per capita taxation, it's going to be taxing each pop, and it's also going to be taxing this income tax rate has gone from 4% to 10%. So while it will levy quite a bit of a big tax on, you know, all the people that are uh, just everyone entirely, uh, it is increasing the tax burden on um, the rich by a larger percentage, and so it will increasingly affect the rich um, with this 10% income tax rate here. And then we see proportional taxation, we see income tax rate rise again, and we see the introduction of a dividends tax rate, which is going to tax the rich even more. Now remember that the uh, clout, a huge percentage of this clout is coming from wealth, so when you swap from per capita taxation onto proportional taxation, now we're eating into the wealth of the, uh, you know, the ownership even more, and so it is going to be... Um, in particular, it is uh, going to level the playing field, and this is going to make it so that, obviously, uh, just kind of coming back to one of these buildings here, you do not care as much um, about having as high a weekly balance, because when you were getting a huge percentage of your, you know, money that you could use for building from the balance uh, or 20 percent of the balance a la the investment pool transfer you cared a whole lot more now that you're starting to tax you know you're starting to skim off that dividend anyways you were getting access to it through the dividends tax rate um it becomes a little bit less important although you still want to have big dividends and then we see once we get to graduated taxation we are going to skim even more money from them with a 30 percent dividends tax rate and so this tax will increasingly uh, moving the tax will be a bit particularly big one um, for increasing the power of the trade units. Now, very often, if you're on per capita taxation, passing proportional taxation um, will be very difficult. And what you can do is you can actually go back from per capita taxation to land-based taxation and then forward from land-based taxation to proportional taxation. Because the only interest group that will support the swap from per capita taxation to proportional will be the trade unionists, who are the very group we're trying to empower by going to proportional taxation taxation but after you go from per capita back to land-based taxation if i'm not mistaken both the armed forces and the petite bourgeoisie will support the transition from land-based taxation to proportional taxation which will allow you to get proportional taxation through okay in addition to proportional taxation and you know eventually graduated taxation you could also increase the tax burden on the rich in particular because by the way you input uh you know your consumption taxes what you'll want to do is you'll want to go in the population tab and you will want to look at the needs of the upper rung pops keeping in mind the wealthy pops these are going to be you know primarily the uh the upper strata is going to be all the ownership in particular and they're going to have a lot of money so you can take a look at what they are consuming and levy a tax particularly on these things and so what this will mean in terms of your taxes is if you are taxing luxuries you are decreasing the wealth of your upper class and this effect will uh, allow you to kind of stamp down their cloud which since cloud is a pie will proportionally increase the cloud of the trade unionists and so you would not want to tax let's say if you have the choice between liquor uh where is liquor in here do we not okay if you have the porch if you have the choice between liquor and let's say luxury furniture let's suppose that they're going to yield you the same amount you would rather tax luxury furniture because your upper strato in particular will consume a lot of it early on when you have a relatively low standard of living what this will mean is you'll want to tax services portion luxury clothes and luxury furniture and even if maybe uh it's particularly profitable you might want to avoid a liquor tax or avoid other taxes just based on taking a look at you know your uh what your pops are consuming and trying to avoid taxing the lower strata which is going to have your laborers and your machinists in particular and also to some extent the middle strata which is going to have your engineers so that's how you handle the taxes so there are two ways we can actively use buildings in order to try and lean our uh, sort of clout towards supporting the trade unions as much as possible. And the first is specializing in buildings that are going to kind of maximize our number of engineers and also of machinists. Um, and so because everyone will have laborers, but machinists and engineers are in particular going to contribute a lot of clout to the trade unions. And so what we first need to do is we can't build any agriculture, ranching or plantations, right? But second, Secondly, um, and this 
this spreadsheet here is not quite exactly made for this. We want to specialize in industries that in particular uh, have a lot of machinists and engineers. And so this is going to be kind of the way we proceed forward. Unfortunately, this ha just has the latest PM. Um, so this is on condensing pump engines, but I believe if I'm not mistaken, um, sort of, or sorry, not condensing pump, uh, compression ignition, but on condensing pump engine, which is relatively early tech, you will have a thousand machinists per level on all of your mines and 250 engineers per level, which is quite a good number early on in particular. Um, you will also, the oil rigs in general, even on the earlier PM will be particularly good. Um, so focusing on the mines in particular in the rural areas will be good for creating a lot of machinists and engineers. Um, you will also, in kind of the urban areas, you will want to focus on two things, and that is steel, um, which will give a lot of machinists and engineers on the top level. This is the top level one, which requires electric arc process, but it is just a little bit fewer uh, on the next one down, which I think is Bessemer process. But tooling workshops in particular, uh, you gain access to steel tools, the best tool PM relatively early, so you'll be getting the full shebang of a thousand machinists and 500 engineers. Now, let's jump back into the game real quick and just talk about, well, how can I try and focus on um, specializing in particular in tools and steel? Well, you can build in a particular place where you're encouraging manufacturing. Like here in India, I think we're encouraging manufacturing in, uh, let's see... Yeah, we are encouraging manufacturing. You can encourage manufacturing in one place, which will give you an advantage because you will have additional throughput, which makes each of your buildings more valuable, um, although it will kind of decrease the amount of labor you need, so there's that. Um, but it will allow you to build taller, and simultaneously what you will want to do is you will want to use your trade to manipulate your buy and sell orders, which is to say you will use trade to create buy orders of tools and steel as much as you can and also import both iron and coal and wood which are the imports for these buildings which allows you to build more of them because if you increase this uh, buy orders by exporting them and you also make them more profitable uh, by importing their inputs and keeping the price of their inputs low although you kind of you want the mines to be profitable because you're building mines too um, this will allow you to specialize more which will give you more pops of that particular type and so what you wanted to be doing is you want to be exporting tools and steel in particular and trying to specialize these in order to push the level of machinists and engineers up uh, to try and get a little bit more clout on your guys in particular the engineers are especially valuable because early on you might not have a high enough level standard of living uh, your machinists might not be getting paid enough uh, in order to really push it and so the 500 uh, engineers you are getting from each level of tooling workshop are probably going to be pretty big gains the second thing you can do in terms of buildings is be just a little bit more aggressive with turning on the labor saving PMs, uh, specifically in rural areas, um, because what they will do is going up the chain will fire laborers specifically, but these laborers are ineligible to become a part of the trade unions anyways, and so firing them in the rural areas will main, mean that your laborers are going to be slightly higher density trade unionist. Um, I don't think that this effect would be particularly strong, uh, but it the 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 logic is still there the mechanics should work this way and also being a little bit more sticky when it comes to turning on labor saving pms in particular in uh, industrial or anything in terms of manufacturers because these are going to be firing laborers now these laborers are probably not very politically active but if you are on a voting system that gives them voting like universal suffrage uh having more of them might be a, a little bit better um this will push up the the wages uh, which will tend to increase SOL which will tend to you know eat into the profit of the capitalist which has kind of some negative effects uh, you know being sticky in this way but if all you really care about is the trade unions getting a little powerful or you kind of want to hit an inflection point where they come above 5% clout or you know above 20% clout or you know you want to kind of pass this law and you need the capitalist to be like uh, making a little bit less money being a little stickier on these um, PMs is something you can uh, you know take a shot at i don't think the effect will be that pronounced i think you probably need to be an sol above 16 to really notice much of anything um but this is something you can do the problem is is uh usually when your sol is starting to get that high these pms actually become quite good and so being sticky uh i think will overall eat into your ability to construct more um but if you don't really care as much about the construction as you do the trade unions you can take this route and it is a little bit of an interesting one 
Now another more active way you can try and increase the clout of the trade unionists is by affecting its uh, pop attraction. One way you can do this is through bolstering and suppressing. You can bolster them in order to boost it and you can also suppress it, uh, but you also need to be on the law laws that allow this. Now it is important to note this will not make it so that pops that are ineligible for being a trade unionist become a trade unionist, although the game seems a little bit weird and buggy in that regard, but if we take a look and kind of jump back into to the wiki and look at which pops could be attracted um, we will see that uh let's see not this page but this page we will see all this sort of attraction right and we will see that for example the engineers can be attracted to either the capitalists or sorry the industrialists or the trade unions when you're bolstering the trade unions this will make the engineers tend to be more attracted to the trade unions similar academics can rule trade unions right uh, because they are not employed in agriculture ranching or plantations they can go trade unionists um, bureaucrats can go trade unionists clergymen can go Cl trade unions but they generally won't also i think clergymen are primarily employed um in rural areas anyways if you're on total separation but all of these pops that are not employed in these areas can go trade unions including even um capitalists can go trade unions except they're ineligible but in game pretty sure just hold on one moment so if you look in game it's weird that the wiki says that they can't be attracted they generally never become attracted or become attracted at really small numbers because there aren't a lot of capitalists but we see 0.1 percent which implies that it's not impossible but this might just be a bug or something to this extent um it does fulfill the criteria that's listed on the wiki but let's not waste too much time on this um but we will see that there's going to be two other things that the uh so bolstering the trade unions allows them to siphon off pops from a lot of other different places you know it also includes servicemen too for example who only have a pop attraction of 100 um and 25 to the armed forces uh 100 from the plus 100 but also 25 from the armed forces not discriminated against and so this means it's going to be 125 versus 50 for the trade unions kind of base values and so in addition to uh, bolstering the trade unions, there are two other interest groups you can in particular uh, suppress if you are looking to spend four or six hundred authority, and you can suppress the industrialists here, right, because they are siphoning off uh, some of the engineers, which are particularly politically active, especially early on. Um, suppressing the industrialists will go a long way to making the trade unions big, but often the industrialists give pretty good bonuses, so you might not want to do this, but you can also suppress the armed forces, which have plus 25 weight which is pretty sizable considering you know you take a look at the laborers weight it's only plus 50 they are going to have a 25 weight as well uh towards the armed forces so often you can also suppress the armed forces and bolster the uh trade unionists you know it's also going to affect the engineers that aren't discriminated for example in your country um they're going to have 25 50 and 50 and so suppressing the armed forces can be effective and also depending on literacy you will have some pops that are are going to be attracted in particular um based on uh, to the intelligentsia right it's plus 20 plus 10 if literacy is over 50 and plus two for each literacy over 50 so this is going to be uh 30 at 100 literacy which you probably won't have um so suppressing the armed forces will allow your pops that are of the eligible type or you know kind of ones that are likely to be in that direction you know the 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 laborers to some extent also the servicemen um which have a decent attraction towards trade unions it will cause all of these to become more trade unionist oriented now let's jump back into the game and talk about the last one we can do um and this is a little bit of a small one but you can also uh in particular uh, you can employ generals uh, that are of the interest group of the trade unions as aggressively as you can. Um, this will increase uh, pop attraction uh, to the interest group. In particular, this means you want to avoid industrialist generals and armed forces general if possible uh, because these are some of the interest groups that are going to uh, compete um, more directly uh, with, um, you know, 
uh, the they're going to compete more directly with the trade units for pops. Uh, if we take a look here and we hover over, uh, we will see, I think if we come in and we hover this clout, uh, we will see that there is a clout modifier from the general. So I guess it's not pop attraction, it's just clout modifier. So if you can get more generals uh, in particular that are trade units, this will help out. But unfortunately, usually the generals you can recruit are on the basis of, you know, that. So a little bit of a summary to a long video here. Uh, first of all, it's essential that you you get a couple of technologies, uh, specifically egalitarianism and labor movement, because what these will do is they will remove a malice that is hidden of 50% uh, uh, off of pop attraction for particularly the trade unionists. Um, this is not visible on the technologies themselves, uh, but it is a quite strong effect, and so getting these as early as possible will help out. Also notably, uh, the later production tech will give you access to more machinists and engineers, um, which are going to give you in terms uh, pops that are more oriented towards the trade unionists in particular. Uh, as far as clout goes, it is calculated through both uh, the amount of money they have and wages, and it is also relative uh, in terms of pie relative to everyone else. And so what this means is, uh, in particular, taxing more of the industrialists or the upper-rung pops uh, in terms of your laws. Uh, that's uh, both the taxation laws being more progressive as well as with your intentional taxes in doing consumption taxes on stuff that the rich pops are consuming um, this will help to bring down the relative clout of the industrialists because it will make them less wealthy which will proportionally make the trade unions what le more wealthy but also going in on laws and in particular having uh law uh, voting systems that give as many people votes as possible because laborers have a tendency to go uh, trade units as do machinists both of which are very numerous but not very uh, wealthy and so when you have law systems that give more and more voting to these people you will have more and more votes informing the power of these uh, guys in particular uh, as far as a strategy for buildings goes uh, the best kind of industries to specialize in early are going to be tooling workshops mainly because you gain access to steel tools relatively early which are going to employ a decent number of machinists and engineers and also to help facilitate this is going to be steel uh, you will not have access to later uh, the very latest steel PMs particularly early but they do in, uh, employ a relatively high number of machinists and engineers even on the earlier ones and also the mines uh, focusing on these um, in particular you do not want to be to build anything out of arable land because while these uh, areas do have laborers and machinists uh, the pops are ineligible to become trade unionists, and so while we take a look here, we will have uh, laborers and machinists. These will instead go towards the rural folk, and so you do not want to do this. One way you can kind of uh, encourage this sort of trend is by importing every arable good and exporting all the finished goods. This means importing grain. This discourages your auto queue from building grain and exporting tools. This allows your auto queue to build more tools because it increases the price of tools. We're artificially creating buy orders in our market by exporting which allows us to build more of the thing and we're artificially increasing sell orders which allows us to build less of the thing um third or kind of moving forward you can also bolster and uh coming in here you can also bolster and suppress here comes the lag of the late game but you can also bolster and suppress the interest groups in particular uh you obviously want to bolster the trade unionists but you also it can be valuable to suppress the two interest groups that are kind of stealing from the trade unionists in terms of attraction because there's going to be a base 50 attraction towards the trade unions for all pops that are not in arable types of land and so what this means is going to be uh pretty much all pops you can kind of uh siphon off from but in particular the military has a relatively high proportion of pops that it, uh it can be attracted to so uh what is it suppressing the military can be effective and also the engineer which is going to contribute um the engineers pops which are going to contribute an enormous amount of clout to the trade unions um can also go uh industrialists so suppressing the industrialists will also help to relatively speaking increase the attraction towards the trade unionists as a result of this um I think it's important to kind of understand uh, building profits a little bit uh, to understand a little bit uh, how things are going. In terms of wages, and this is just to better understand the wealth, in terms of wages, uh, wages are always proportional to each other. Laborers always get paid one-sixth what a capitalist gets paid. Uh, what causes enormous discrepancies in wealth is a higher and higher weekly balance. In general, as your SOL moves up, the balance will move down uh, because labor becomes increasingly expensive. And so one way you can kind 
kind of uh, tamp down the balance, which is a positive thing, um, but increase wages. Uh, this, or doing this rather, uh, will increase the relative power of the trade unions relative to you know the uh, the ownership class or the other classes. And so it's important to kind of uh, keep in mind that you do want to be uh, increasing SOL or. SOL is going to be the best indicator of how powerful your trade unionists are, and while you want to keep SOL down because you want uh, labor to be cheap, um, you can eventually get SOL high while having uh, labor, you know, kind of relatively cheap, um, or not relatively cheap, but um, relatively a low percentage of your overall input by going to later and later PMs. Uh, it will be, wages will be a higher percentage of your PMs on the earlier PMs and then the later PMs, because they're more efficient, allow you to pay people more. Same with um, the labor saving PMs, which you in particular maybe want to be slightly stickier on turning on the labor saving PMs in the, uh, sorry, in the, uh, the manufacturers because these are going to be labor, these are laborers that are eligible to turn um, trade unionists and a little bit more aggressive with turning on the labor saving PMs in the rural areas because these are going to be laborers that are ineligible um, that to be uh, trade unionists that are destroyed or gotten rid of uh, which can be like where you want to be saving your labor. I hope this video was informative slash interesting. Uh, feel free to like, comment, subscribe slash hit that's wait yeah, likes, comment, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Those are the ones. And if you've been sitting through this entire video, which relatively long video, um, you might want to get up and take a walk, get the blood flowing. Um, it's good for your health, good for your mood, all these sorts of things. It can be easy to forget to do. But other than that, other than that, have a good day.